Hey everyone, welcome to the Let's Create series, a series where we create mechanics from popular games using blueprints. Today we'll be creating Farah's jetpack and boost abilities from Overwatch. In the preview that you see, this is the final result of the two-part video. As you saw last week, we are now taking a mechanic, learning how to make it, and then polishing it. So this week, on Tuesday or Wednesday, we're going to be polishing Farah's ability. If you're new to the series, make sure to watch the foundation video. So the same as always, we're going to duplicate our FPS controller. We're going to call this the Farah controller. And then we're just going to open this up. And we're going to add a new section. This section is going to be all about the jetpack and also the boost. In order to start off, we're going to learn about how you can track how long a key is being pressed for, and we can also track what state the key is at. So whether it's being pressed or if it's released. In order to track this, we need to get the player controller, which will give us access to two additional nodes. These are get input, whoops, get input key down which is going to track how long you've held this key down for. In our case, when you hold space, which is what I'm assuming people want for the jetpack for hovering, when you're holding space, it's going to give us a value. The other thing we want is we want to get something called get input analog key state. This is going to return whether space is zero or one. Zero means you are not pressing space. One means you are press holding it down. This is going to allow us to figure out whether or not we should add or subtract to the amount of fuel left in Ferris jetpack. This value up here is going to allow us to determine whether or not you should be flying as Ferra. As you know, Ferra can just jump, but if you hold the button down, she can hover. In order to start all this off, we need to get an event tick. And then the event tick, because we're going to have two separate branches occurring here, we want to have sequence so we can run multiple nodes, one after the other. And then we're going to set up the, the first branch, which is going to be a branch here. And we want to check if this is greater than zero. If it's greater than zero, we are going to allow Farah to begin using her jetpack. We're going to leave this for now and come back to this. As this is the simple part to set up, we're going to tackle the other section first. And that begins here. So with this here, I mentioned before, it returns a zero or one. Because it is a float, as you can see here, we need to use something called nearly equal. And the reason why we use nearly equal is because a float is never truly a single number, like an integer. It's never a zero or one. It's always actually like a, it could be a 0 0.000012, or it could be a 1.00021 or something like that. It's never truly just a zero or one. That's why we want to use this error tolerance. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to create another branch. And from this branch, we're going to create two additional checks. So we're going to create two additional branches. So one up here and one down here. And I'll explain what all these do in a moment. And before we get into what these are going to do, we're going to create a variable called hover time. And we want this to be a float. What hover time will do is hover time will track how much fuel is left in Ferris jetpack. The max hover time, a new variable, max hover time, is going to tell us how long Ferris can hover for. So if I set this to 120, when, when hover time reaches 120, Ferris can no longer jetpack up and she's going to fall until hover time or her fuel has something left. So let's say you're at 80 and you hold space down and it gets to 100. You can release space like in Overwatch and it will slowly decrease to like 70 and then you can hold space again. 
That's what hover time will be doing. <clears throat> and we're going to just drag these out here for now as gets, as we're going to use these in a moment. In order to increase or decrease hover time, we're going to use something called increment and decrement. So from true, we are going to add in decrement float, which is going to decrease a float. And over here, if this is true, we're going to increment the float, which is going to add to the float. And I'll, I'm, I am going to walk through exactly why they are there in a minute. The setup's really important here. And as you can see here, we have this thing. This is going to return a zero or a one. And I wanna demonstrate that to you. So over here, I'm going to make a print string and instead of saying hello, we're going to get this float and plug it in here. I'm then going to hit compile and save. I'm just going to see what this is about. Um, no value passed into target. Uh, let's see. Oh, it's because of these. Let's just break these branches for now. Compile. And I'm going to hit play. Oh, wait. Go to your FPS game mode and make sure your default pawn class is set to Ferro. Compile and save that, close that, minimize, hit play, and you can see it's currently at zero. When I press one, it goes, when I press space, it goes to one, zero, one, zero, one. And you can see it's visually tracking there. So we can actually delete this now and just set this back to this branch. So since that is tracking whether it's zero or one, we can use that as a condition in this branch here. So when it's zero, meaning this branch is true because we've got the true here, we're going to take away from our hover time, which means the fuel in the jetpack is going to go down so you can press it again. When, you, when this is false, it means you're holding it because it's at one, which is going to increase. And that is going to allow us to reach max hover time so Farrah can no longer hover anymore or use her jetpack. So what we're going to do here is we need to see for this condition, if hover time is greater than zero and we're holding it and we're not holding it down, we want to decrease from hover time, which I'm going to drag into here. Then I'm going to double click and bring it down here so it's a bit cleaner. So once again, if hover time is greater than zero, go to this branch and decrease from hover time. And for this branch here, you can probably guess if hover time is less than something. In this case, if hover time is less than or equal to max hover time. This becomes true, which means we need to increase the hover time. And I can plug that into that and compile and save that. So let's go through this again. So over here, eventic runs, sequence runs. This checks if we're holding space, which is a zero or one. If it's a one, which means we're holding, sorry, if it's a zero, which means we're not holding, decrease the, the hover time. If we are holding it, we want to increase hover time because it's going to go from zero to 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, and then it's gonna reach 120, and then we're no longer gonna be able to fly. And to see how this works visually, what we can do is we can actually put a string here and I can plug in hover time into here just temporarily. So it's gonna be a little messy. You can do something like this. If you double click here and maybe drag that to there, compile, save. And now we can see what's happening here. So. Minimize that, hit play, see how it's going up. It reaches 120 and then it decreases. So this is 
Ferrer's jetpack fuel. Increasing, decreasing. When it reaches 120, it can no longer fly. Mm -hmm. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually add in the functionality since we've set up the foundation. In order to set up the functionality, when input key time down is greater than zero, which means it's true, we're going to create a branch once again. We're going to bring this branch down here. We're going to double click and then drag this over here to keep it all neat. And what we're going to do is if we're going to use this node again, so we're going to be really efficient with this. If the hover time is less than max hover time, and then we're going to double click again, and drag this down here. We can go over here, which, and go into new branch. So this is checking, are we over our max hover time? If we're not, we're going to allow ourselves to hover. The next check, we actually might be able to get away with that next check. Let's see what happens. So what I want to do is add impulse to character movement. We've used the launch character before. You can use launch character here. Add impulse does a very similar thing. It's just going to add a force to our Z, which is going to propel us upwards. And I'm just going to set that to 2,500 for now and compile that and save it. And I'm just going to test it before I explain it. So I'm hovering, hovering, hit 120, and then I begin to decay, begin to fall. So I can hover for a bit, and then, yeah, I can manage my jetpack. So I can hover for a bit, let go, and go back into hovering. And those numbers on the side indicate how much time you have left to hover. Awesome. The next thing we want to do, and let me, I'll explain this all once again at the end, as I always do. <clears throat> so this is going to be, so select it all, press C, uh, jetpack, hover. And now we're just gonna quickly create the jetpack boost. In order to create the jetpack boost, we're going to go back into Unreal, go to settings, project settings, and then we're going to go to input once it opens. And we're just gonna create an action mapping for the left shift. So this will be, we're just gonna call this ability two. Oh, sorry, not ability two. I could call this jetpack boost, but we might use it for something else. So this will just be shift ability, just so we can use it for anything we want. And in this case, we want the left shift we're then going to close this, go back into our Ferro controller, and we're going to write uh, shift ability. We're then going to do a check. So what we want to do here is we want to create one more variable and we want to call this can boost. And this is going to be a Boolean. By default, we want it to be set to true. So make sure it's set to true so we can boost at the very start of the game. We're then going to make this into a branch. And the condition for this, as you can get, probably guess, is if we can boost. So we're going to get that and plug that into our branch. If we can boost, we're going to go through two things. First of all, we're going to set can boost. So set can boost to false by not ticking this. If we tick this, it'll be true. By not ticking it, it'll be false. We're then going to add impulse. And remember, we want character movement because this is what's controlling our movement. And then on the Z, this is how high you want to fly. We're gonna tick velocity change so we don't have to worry about our mass for now. And we want to set this to something like 1,500. Now, we need to reset the can boost after X amount of time. So we want a delay node. And then what we want to do is create another variable, if you want, called boost delay. You don't have to, you can just type in here. I'm gonna create it a float, drag this into here, get, and drag that into there. 
I'm going to hit compile. And I'm going to make it so every five seconds you can boost. And then what I'm going to do is finally reset the boost at the very end. So can boost set to true. We're then going to comment this Fera jetpack boost is the ability here. We're going to then compile, save, and let's try this out. So you'll press shift and you'll boost in the air. You can also just use your jetpack. And then you can boost again. So now you have both the, the boost and the jetpack, which you can use together. And our obstacle course from earlier works. So you can really easily complete this if you still have it. I just had to boost there because I didn't have enough velocity going up. And let's get the last one. And now because we've got Ferris jetpack, we can just hover over here really easily. Now, what you can do, what I'll do now is quickly just explain everything once again, as I like to do. <clears throat> so, if the spacebar is being held down, check this branch here and check if the hover time is less than 120, check if it's less than the max hover time. If it's less than the max hover time, allow Farah to hover. This stuff here, we are simply checking if the input is zero or one. If it's zero, take away from hover time. If it's one, increase hover time. Over down here, as I just mentioned before, we have a branch. We check if we can boost. If we can boost, we set can boost to false so you can't instantly uh, boost again. We then add an impulse, which is similar to launch character, which will send us up. We then delay by whatever you want boost delay to be. In my case, I set it to five. And then we set can boost to true so you can boost again. And then you can do this forever. So I'm just going to minimize this. <clears throat> So in the next video, what I want to do is add add a little something to this because in the last episode, I really enjoyed polishing up this mechanic with the third person where we added this little obstacle course and all these objects. So what we're going to do is, I'm not sure if you guys have ever played Spyro before, but in Spyro, there, there are these rings that you can kind of fly through and then a nice particle effect appears and a sound plays and you get like points. So what I want to do in the next episode is show you guys how to make these really fancy kind of like spiral like rings, which you'll see in the preview of this episode. And I also want to get the sound effects in and I would love to do some basic UI stuff with you guys to start off with because we haven't done any of that. So this week, probably tomorrow or Wednesday, you guys will see the second part of this episode where we're going to polish up this mechanic. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you enjoy these types of videos, consider supporting me on Patreon, it really helps out. I'm going to be able to purchase a proper mic stand through Patreon now, which is so useful because my mic stand right now is not the best. And thanks for watching everyone. Thank you for checking out my channel, subscribing. Thank you for supporting my Patreon. And I'll see you guys in the next video.